Welcome to Thoroughbred Action from Gulfstream Park. I'm Ron Nicoletti. It is a soggy Wednesday afternoon. We got 10 races to look at. Let's go to Pete Aiello with this track and weather conditions. Lots of overnight rain and pretty much rain all afternoon long here at Gulfstream Park. So our Wednesday card begins with a sloppy main track and we're off the turf. First of the day off the turf on the main track at a mile and the 16th. The first finish line comes into play. Claimers in for $16,000. Scratch the two, three, six, seven, and the nine, as well as the 12. And the favorites included number five, our closure, and number 10, Windjammer. Racing at Gulfstream. Port Salerno blew the start, three lengths. Play That Tone was away quickly and moves out to take a clear advantage from Windjammer, who moves to take second. Bodie's Valentine and Mohaney out of there, third and fourth. Our closure is second last while racing about six lengths off the leader and two back to Port Salerno. Around the first turn they go and play that tone and Leonel Reyes loose up top with a three-length lead. Second is Windjammer, third is Mohaney. Bodie's Valentine follows along fourth with our closure racing back fifth and Port Salerno is last. 24 seconds for the opening quarter speed as they head into the backstretch. Play that tone with their ears up in front by a length and a quarter. Up on the outside, Mohaney's tugging while three wide Windjammer's in the two path. Bodie's Valentine is next as they look to slacken the tempo. On the outside in our closure from fifth and the trailer is Port Salerno. They go to the half mile juncture and on the outside Windjammer takes on play that tone. Bodie's Valentine is between horses while racing in third. Our closure's on her outside. Mohaney still confidently handled by Linderos while widest of all and the trailer is Port Salerno. Inside half a mile from home through a 49 and two half mile and up to take the lead is Windjammer. Moves to a length advantage. Our closure on the outside now second. Mohaney has plummeted the last toward the rail in Port Salerno as there's less than three furlongs to run. Windjammer has the lead three parts of a length our closure on the outside second port salerno at 10 to 1 has an inside lane from third back to fourth and play that tone and there's a quarter of a mile left to go windjammer fights to hold it outside in our closure inside in port salerno three quarters 115 and one and they're at the top of the stretch widest of all our closure is up for a narrow lead toward the rail port salerno fired up and right with her back to third and windjammer final eighth of a mile our closure out in the center under double j has the lead and our closure for bobby debona gets the job done. Port Salerno second, Windjammer third. They were well clear of Bodie's Valentine who ran fourth in 147 flat. Number five, our closure had some good races on the main track, making her one to fear in the opening contest. She gets the victory under an aggressive ride from Jonathan Gonzalez, who's making the best of limited opportunities here this meet. Bobby Devona trains the daughter of Repent for Philip DeCosmo. Four, Port Salerno was second, ahead of the 10, Windjammer ran third. To the second race now at five and a half furlongs over the main track. Claimers in for $6,250. A field of seven. Favorite was the four. First goal. And they're off. Francesco appealed just a step slower than the others. Good start for the big favorite, first goal, who's heading off for the advantage from off duty, who moves to be second. Mystical Miles is out of there third. Pachanga Party is fourth. Then Francesco appealed too clear of Henny Hefner. Forrest Gator is last. At four to five, first goal is the speed of the speed, but here's a challenge from off duty on the outside. These two work two better than Pachanga Party, who's third, back to fourth in Mystical Miles. Inside in Francesco appeal, five in front of Henny Hefner, and Forrest Gator is last. Less than three furlongs to go, and it's still first goal in front. Off duty, won't let him get a breather. Within a half a length of the lead, Pachanga Party, three wide while third, Miguel Vasquez scrubbing on Francesco appeal with an inside lane, and there's a quarter of a mile left to go. Off duty, gonna take a crack at first goal off the top of the turn. They went 22 and two for a quarter speed. They went a half mile and 46 flat. Off duty and first goal kick on. Final eighth of a mile on the outside and off duty toward the rail and first goal. Off duty for a narrow lead. First goal counter punches. First goal off duty. Off duty first goal. Off duty won it. First goal was second. Francesco appeal third then Pachanga party. Number four first goal figured to be the speed of the speed but also figured to take a lot of pressure and he did just that, make the lead, but take a lot of pressure. In the end, number two, off duty, gave him enough pressure to wear him down on the stretch under jockey Amisai El Jaramillo for Gilberto Zerpa and GV21 Entertainment. Four, first goal has to settle for second ahead of the one Francesco Appeal, who ran third. We'll be right back. The best chance for success begins with a solid foundation. At Hardacre Farm, early personal one-on-one -on -one care starts the journey to becoming a champion. Bred to leading stallions, our mares represent the highest standards. Hardacre Farm's signature in the breeding industry. Based in Ocala, Florida, 
Breeder and owner Amy Tarrant has inspired excellence throughout her entire career. In your quest for success, start with Hardacre Farm, breeding the champions of tomorrow. Back now for race number three on the program, off the turf on the main track at five furlongs. Starter allowance optional claiming event for fillies and mares. Scratch the two, three, and five. All the money on number seven, Ladies Island. And they're off. Cordell blew the start about four lengths. From the fence, delicious pursuit, a way to take the lead from the big favorite, Ladies Island, who moves up on the outside to challenge for the lead. These two speed away, five or six ahead of Bright Venezuela, men answer my call, and Cordell has her back against the wall after blowing the start. She's better than 10 lengths off the lead of the Daughter of Greatness. Ladies Island speeds around the far turn on a three-length lead. Delicious Pursuit is now back to second, well clear of Bright Venezuela in third. Get out the wide angles for answer my call and Cordell as they run to the top of the stretch. With the advantage, it's Ladies Island. She's on top at the quarter pole by three and a half. Delicious Pursuit is second. Answer my call. Starts to get some momentum under Hernandez Jr. She cuts the corner third and they wheel in. Ladies Island by five. Second is Delicious Pursuit. Third inside and answer my call. Final eighth of a mile. Ladies Island through a 45 and two half mile. Leads by three. Delicious Pursuit is dead game but only second best to Ladies Island who wins by two and a half. Second is Delicious Pursuit. Answer my call ran well. She was third ahead of Bright Venezuelan and Cordell in 59 flat. Number seven, Ladies Island wins like a one to five shot should as she powers to victory under jockey Tyler Gaffleone. She's been much improved of late for Georgina Baxter and Matisse Racing Stable and the Black and White Express of Averill Racing Stable. Second one, Delicious Pursuit. And third was the eight, answer my call. On now to race number four of the afternoon, one mile over the main track. Claimers in for a price tag of $30,000. Scratch the four, J-Boys Echo, a field of six. Favorites included one, Gilded Warrior, and two, Springmeyer. And they're off. Springmeyer, one of the first to break the line. Fafa has speed. Up on the outside, All-Star Red giving the green light to try to get some forward position. At the inside and Gilded Warrior alongside Ella's My Love and Prince Tito is last. Out of the shoot and onto the main course. The speed of the speed is Springmeyer, who fronts the field by two. Second is outside Fafa, third to the far outside on All-Star Red. Then Yellow's My Love with Gilded Warrior at the inside, and Prince Tito is last. Ignore that opening quarter, five furlongs left to race. Springmeyer on a two-length lead. Second is a Fafa, third at the inside and Gilded Warrior. Ella's My Love is racing from fourth. Out wide is All-Star Red. The veteran campaigner's fifth and about five lengths off the lead, and Prince Tito is still at the back. They go to the half mile point and Springmeyer has paved the path so far, but his lead is down to a length. Up on the outside, Fafa creeps a bit closer second. All-Star Red three wide and up into third around Gilded Warrior, who still has a shot from there. So does Ella's My Love, held up in traffic under Linderos, and the trailer is Prince Tito. Less than three-eighths of a mile to go, and up front, Springmeyer fights to hold it. Up between horses, Fafa. Now let loose as Springmeyer's called to today. All-Star Red to the attack on Fafa. Back to third and Ella's My Love, then Gilded Warrior. There's a quarter of a mile left to go. Big time confrontation, All-Star Red up on the outside toward the inside. Fafa, they straighten away shoulder to shoulder with an eighth of a mile left to go. Alban Jimenez and All-Star Red trying to overpower Fafa. Fafa's dead game. Fafa inside, All-Star Red on the outside, but All-Star Red doing the better work. All-Star Red for the lead, All-Star Red for the win. Fafa was second, well clear. Vela's my love third. Then it was Gilded Warrior and Prince Tito. Number six, All-Star Red is just a horse you can count on when he races here at Gulfstream Park. He gets a very nice win here today. Hard-fought win it was under jockey Alvin Jimenez for Carliza, Racing Stable, and Lily Curtinez. Second, number five, Fafa. Third, number three, Ella's My Love. On now to race number five of the afternoon, the start of the Rainbow Six. Off the turf, main track and one mile. Maiden claimers in for 20,000. Scratch the three, six, seven, 11, and 14. Favorite was 13, Rags for Britches. And they're off. Eric, the salesman, away well from his inside gate. He's heading off for the yearly lead. Mia Miro and King Leo try to go after him. In between horses, Little Rough Justice wants some forward position, and they run out of the chute. Then back to Bellamy Street with Rags for Britches spotted wide on the course. Maturin is with Mr. Nobody, and Prolific Runner is last. 
Out of the shoot and onto the main course, the opening quarter goes to King Leo and Irat Ortiz Jr. They lead by a length. Eric the Salesman is second. Little Rough Justice is a joint third alongside Mia Miro. Then it's Maturin held up between horses. Mr. Nobody is wide. Bellamy Street is along the rail. Three back to Rags for Bridges. The favorite is still out in the center of the course. He's dropped to last now as prolific runners ahead of him through a 23 and three opening quarter speed. Irat Ortiz Jr. and King Leo are gonna try to bottom him out here. They go to the half mile pole in front by three. Eric the Salesman Salesman is keeping pace while second, five clear of Matter in third. Then Little Rough Justice, who's back to fourth. Then Mr. Nobody outside and Mia Miro ahead of Bellamy Street as they went 47 and one to the opening half mile. King Leo has patted his lead. He's now in front by maybe eight. All in second is Eric the Salesman. Maturin is 21 to one and running home from third as they move to the top of the stretch. King Leo has blown this wide open under Irat Ortiz Jr. A quarter of a mile from home and about 10 on top. Maturin has moved to be second around Eric the Salesman. Then it's Mr. Nobody. Rags for Britches might get a slice, but impossible to think anybody gets to King Leo. Eighth of a mile to go. King Leo and Irat Ortiz Jr. are three to one. And that appears to be easy money. King Leo with never an anxious moment. He'll win it as much as he wants under Irat Ortiz Jr. He'll win it by eight or nine. Matcher in second, Mr. Nobody third, then Rags for Bridges and Little Rough Justice. Jockey Irat Ortiz Jr. with an aggressive ride on the son of Tapazar as number 12, King Leo, gets a big lead going around the far turn and pretty much slams the door on anybody thinking to challenge as he gets a very easy win under Jockey Irat Ortiz Jr. for Antonio Sano and Cloudline Nimoni. Second number five, Maturin, and third was the nine, Mr. Nobody. Time for a commercial break. The late pick five is on the other side of this timeout. Don't go away. Back now for race number six on the program, the start of today's late pick five. Six furlongs of the journey, allowance optional claiming horses in for $25,000. A field of seven, the favorite was the one, Articulator. And they're off. Level beginning. Trio of champions, the first to break the line. Articulator is being sent at the rail outside and coming on now, Star Wancho. And also mixing it up is Bold Envoy as they scrimmage for the early lead. Back to fifth early is Septemia Severus, the two at the back, the best candy, and Acor. They make their way to the half mile point, and at three to five, Articulator has to work hard through this opening quarter mile to get the lead, but he does, and he leads a length and a half. Star Wancho second. Bold Envoy third and down toward the inside ahead of a retreating trio of champions who's out sprinted today and back to fourth. Septemius Severus is next ahead of the best candy and Acor is last as the leader is Articulator. Less than five sixteenths to go. Articulator has one to fight off. It's the second running on the outside Star Wancho. These two well clear of the others with a quarter of a mile left to go. Inside Articulator and Haramio with the lead. Outside Irat Ortiz Jr. and Star Wancho to the attack. They went 45 and one for a half mile and on the Outside, Star Wancho starts to get to Articulator. Star Wancho now takes the lead. Articulator can do nothing about it as Star Wancho is kicking clear. Star Wancho at six to one. He's in front. Articulator second, well clear of Septemia Severus, who ran third. Then Acor and Bold Envoy. Number one, Articulator took a lot of early pressure and it certainly softened him up for number four, Star Wancho, as our Rod Ortiz Jr. is in the zone here this afternoon. He gets another riding success aboard the son of Cantharos for Jose Garofalo in Grupo 7C Racing. One, Articulator second, five, Septemius Severus, and third. On out of the seventh race we go, a rare mile and an eighth main track event. This race originally scheduled for that same distance on turf. This race is an allowance optional claiming race. Scratch the one, two, three, and eight. Irat Ortiz Jr. on the four on Bridal Holiday. Race time favorites included the 10, Race Me Home, and the 11, Awesome Thought. And they're off. Race Me Home away well from the outside, and Jose Ortiz is riding him for the early lead, while brother Irat Ortiz saves ground with unbridled holiday toward the rail. Awesome Thought gets started on the outside. So Race Me Home and Awesome Thought now pair off up front. Away racing in third is the Green Moster. In between horses goes Golden Spear. Unbridled holiday is next out the rail. It's a gap of two and a half to Appreciato, and Blue Harbor is last of all as they charge around the first turn. 
Awesome thought, used hard to get the lead, but he has it now and tries to back down the speed from Race Me Home in second. On the outside, the Green Moster is racing in third. Unbridled Holiday gets a ground-saving trip toward the rail fourth. Golden Spear is back to fifth and Appreciato and three to Blue Harbor. 23 and three for the opening quarter speed. Down the back stretch they go. Awesome thought on the board at five to two, leads three parts of a length. Fellow five to two shot, Race Me Home on the outside is now second. Up on the inside, an unbridled holiday, a joint third alongside the Green Moster. A gap of four to Golden Spear, who steadily lost ground. At the inside, Blue Harbor improved to be out of last place, and now the trailer, Appreciato. They leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. They went 47-3 and three for the opening half mile. These are strong numbers being put up by the top pair and race me home. Now at the three furlong point up to put a neck on top. Fighting on second, that's awesome thought on Broddled Holiday. Looks for racing room as he's pocketed in by the green moster on the outside. Two back to Golden Spear. Blue Harbor rallies from last with a quarter of a mile left to go. On Broddled Holiday begging for racetrack. Irad Ortiz Jr. going to try to get through inside of Brother Jose on race me home. These two off the top of the turn and unbridled holiday now cut the corner thread the needle and takes over the lead race me home is alongside second down the center and the green moster with blue harbor inside that final furlong and it's unbridled holiday who's kicking clear unbridled holiday for patrick bn cone and irad ortiz jr three on top it's a very close photo for second between the green moster and blue harbor race me home was fourth in 151 and one give irad ortiz jr three in a row here this afternoon as Unbridled Holiday is a horse that can run for days, and he takes advantage of this extended trip, getting the win inside that final quarter of a mile for Patrick B. N. Cone and DP Racing. Five, Blue Harbor with a good run. He got second ahead of the nine, the Green Moster, ran third. We move now to the eighth race of the afternoon, the start of the late pick three off the turf on the main track, mile and the 16th, the journey. Scratch the two and six, a field of six. Favorites included the one, Sandbacker, and three, Archie is back. And they're off. From the rails, Sembacker begins well, moving up on the outside. That's Gearhead in between horses. Love Point with R.G. is back in the charge to the first turn. Sembacker has the inside edge and the lead with R.G. is back alongside second. At the fence, Skywire's a joint third alongside Love Point. Then comes Gearhead and Jace's Solitude is last of all as they charge around the first turn. It's a two-ply duel up front with R.G. is back in the two-path and Sam Backer along the rail. They're a length and a half better than Gearheads is a three-wide third at the inside and Skywire with Love Point between horses. And then it's a gap of another eight or nine to Jace's Solitude, who's not keeping up early. 23 and two for the opening quarter speed. Down the back stretch they go. Art G is back. He has the lead now three parts of a length. Sam Backer is second on the outside gearhead third. At the rail and fourth is Skywire racing ahead in front of Love Point. And then it's a gap of another five or six to Jace's Solitude, who's actually a bit closer than he was before through a 47 and three half mile. They leave the back stretch and move on to the far turn to the first finish line they go. Jose Ortiz and Sam Backer have re-rallied to challenge for the top. Art G is back is alongside second Skywire. Now three wide for hot-handed Irad Ortiz Jr. And on the move, five in front of Love Point as they round the far turn. Skywire making a big bid to take over the lead. Art G is back, tries to go with him second. Sam Backer is an all-in third after three quarters and one 12 and four. Less than a quarter of a mile to go and Skywire to get. Skywire turns for home by two and a half. Art G is back his second. Then it's Sam Backer with Love Point. But through the final furlong, Irad Ortiz Jr. is in the zone today. He's on his way to his fourth win of the afternoon aboard Skywire and the Gary Barber pink and black. He'll win by five in the end. Second is RG is back. Third is Love Point. Then Sam Backer, 145 and three. Jockey Irad Ortiz Jr. goes four in a row here this afternoon as number five Skywire powers to victory for Mark Cassie and owners Lucio Tucci and Gary Barber. Second, number three, RG is back. And third was the four, Love Point. Time for a commercial break. Still to come, the late Daily Double. Don't go away. Whether you're at home or at the track, have a stake in the race when you bet with Express Bet. Sign up for an Express Bet online betting account and receive up to a $500 sign up bonus. 
Back now for race number nine on the program. First half of the late daily double. Allowance optional claiming event at six furlongs. Scratch the one, six, and seven. A field of six. All eyes on the speedy, classy XYJ. And they're off. Picture perfect beginning for XY Jet from the outside, and Jaramillo doesn't have to ask him for very much to get a clear advantage. XY Jet, the boss. Up on the outside, Reason to Soar is now second, Cove Blue between horses, then Noble Indy. Sentia Men is down toward the rail, and the trailer is Millionaire Runner. They head to the half-mile point, chasing the classy son of Cantharos, XY Jet, who leads the way a length and a half. On the comeback try, Noble Indy is moved to be second with Cove Blue third. Reason to Soar is three wide while fourth and Santi Amen and Millionaire Runner. The opening quarter was 22 and two. That's walking for XY Jet. He leads it by two and a half. From the outside, that's Reason to Soar who's a joint second alongside Noble Indy from third. Santi Amen is now back to fourth and Millionaire Runner in Cove Blue. There's a quarter of a mile left to go and XY Jet Hasn't taken a deep breath yet. He's at the half mile in 45 and 2 and wheels for home on a three length lead. Reason to soar, Cove Blue and Noble Indy all out after him with an eighth of a mile left to go. Haramio now gives XY Jet a reminder to finish the job. And the job is finished as XY Jet is now pointed to Dubai with an emphatic score on a Wednesday afternoon. XY Jet in a romp. Second, Santi Amen. Third was Reason to soar, then Noble Indy and Millionaire Runner in 109 and 4. XY Jet takes care of business in today's ninth race. He really ran very easily here this afternoon and humbles the competition in his quest to become a Golden Shaheen winner. He's headed to Dubai for another try at that event. Jorge Navarro, the winning trainer of Isael Jaramillo on board for Rockingham Ranch and the Gelfenstein Farm. We move now to race number 10 of the afternoon, final live race of the day on the main track at one mile. Maiden claimers in for $20,000. Scratch the 3, 4, 5, 7, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Heavily favored, number one, Cold Truth. And runners away. Rulership blew the start bad. He's at least four lengths last. Shanghai Levi and Broadcast Time are both away quickly. In between horses, Stag of Sylvia moves to challenge, and Cold Truth is along the rail. The pace is quick early. Second last is looking savvy, and after blowing the start, Rulership is the trailer. Out of the chute and onto the main course, and Cold Truth and Castellano having to use a lot of speed to get the front. They complete the opening quarter in 23 flat. Broadcast time second on the outside, and Shanghai Levi from third. It's a gap of three to Stag of Sylvia. Then comes looking savvy, and out the back door is rulership. Down the back stretch they go. They go to the 5 8 mark. Now they go to the half mile point. At 2 to 5, it's Cold Truth going to try to bottom out the group. Leads by two over broadcast time on the chase second. Shanghai Levi is now third. Looking savvy and proves to be fourth. Then back to the outside and stag of Sylvia and rulership is far back. 46 and 1. That's a fast half mile no matter how you slice it. And the leader is Cold Truth by two and a half. Second is broadcast time. Driven third, Shanghai Levi. Looking savvy. Has a shot from there here under jockey Jose Alvarez. They've gone awfully quick early. The rest are have to hurry up. Led by rulership with Stag of Sylvia. And there's a quarter of a mile left to go. They move through three quarters in 112 and 3. And they're at the top of the stretch. It's Cold Truth who has the lead. Widens to a five length lead. Looking savvy, going to try to get into second alongside broadcast time. Shanghai Levi down the center. But Cold Truth, he took a licking and he keeps on ticking. He's in front by five. Broadcast time is holding on to second with looking savvy third. Cold Truth for fun. Broadcast time second, looking savvy third. And fourth with Shanghai Levi in 140 and three. Not really much to say about today's 10th race other than number one, Cold Truth was much the best horse, humbling the competition. He went fast, but he could get away with that because he was much the best. Javier Castellano pointed him in the right direction for trainer Anthony Cordarello and the Luch Lime Green, Ron Paolucci Racing Stable. Second number two, broadcast time, and third was number eight, looking savvy. Rainbow Six just, uh, Rainbow Six returns over $429 for a 20 cent wager. Triggers a carryover going forward to Thursday of more than $50,000. Well, that wraps up Wednesday's card. We're back here on Thursday with an 11 race card. Our first race post is at 12.35. And don't forget, a special holiday week will be running on Monday, President's Day. So mark your calendar down. Good night and good luck. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. I've been working all day. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. What do you say? Let me tell you.
tell you, Jack, I'm so tired. 